Assalamualaikum and good day. In this video, we are going to talk about the myth versus fact in genetic field. And the purpose for this presentation is to have society to realize and make decision whether it is truly science or pseudoscience. My name is Noor Shahida, and now we are going to examine a very important branch of biology, genetics. Genetics is the study of units of hereditary. These are called genes and they determine almost everything about what makes you, you. Genes are passed from parent to offspring. Since genes have a strong influence on all organisms, genetics is a very broad scientific discipline touching on fields like forensic, ecogenetic, immunogenetics, biochemistry, medicine, and evolution. If someone says we only use 10% of our brains, is that myth or fact? So, what is myth? The term came from the Greek word mythos, which at one point in time meant words or anything that was spoken or considered as mythos. The term was later redefined to include any story or any telling of of an event and later it become truth or something that people believe. In the other hand, fact is something that is proven to have occurred or to exist. It is also something that is undeniable based on empirical research and quantifiable measures. Facts go beyond the theories. They are proven through calculation they are proven through calculations and experience or something that surely occurred in the past. To make it same well, the difference between myth and fact are myths originate from generational thoughts or beliefs while facts are based on scientific evidence. Then, myths have been used to explain the unexplained while facts has been used to explain what can be explained. Next, my fellow group members will debunk the common myths by shedding light to these truths of these issues. Genetic had become a familiar word in daily conversations. However, it usually came out as faulty information in which it became a fallacy. One of the myths related to genetics is all mutations are bad. Not just the society, even for us who actually have vastly deeper information than those who are not in this field, we also do have the first impression of the word mutation if we are to hear it. Detrimental effects shall be the first that come across our mind. This misconception might arise from movies and discussion about people who suffered from genetic diseases. We don't usually talk about problems of healthy people as we saw no complication in their physical, thus we never know about the non-harmful mutations. Next, people often assumed that genes manage everything in the body. Some of us believed that our emotions, attitudes, physical problems, for instance obesity, are all fully related to our genetic content. This misbelief prevailed might be due to the inaccurate way of creating awareness. The experts and media were stressing too much on the fact that genetic plays a role in this matter to the extent where they missed the importance of reminding that despite good genes created a better generation while bad genes produced the undesirable, Commonly, it contributed only a small percentage in certain offspring development. Lastly, on any occasion at which any cancer was mentioned, we would always end up with the cliché assumption that it was brought down from the ancestor. It is undeniable that all the information begins from the experts, namely the medical doctors and educators who are able to give direct information to the people. Yet, some predictions were made by the society causes the information to be misleading. A few population of people now assumed that cancer is inherited and genetics are the major cause. That is why we should be rational in deciding either we got the right information or not, since there is a quite a number of misbelief going on right now. As my colleague has said just now, there is one too many myths in the genetic field that can be harmful for us to believe in and consider as facts. From fallacy will form doubt and morph into misunderstanding. So let's debunk them one by one. Point one. Not all mutations are bad. It is quite common to see people associate the word mutation to solely negative connotations. Mutations effects can be beneficial, harmful, or neutral, depending on their context or location. However, 
most people do not realize that mutations are a naturally occurring phenomenon that cause changes in the DNA sequence in which it will cause differences between two individuals. In most cases, mutations do not even have a distinct effect to an individual because our cells are capable of repairing itself. There are examples where mutations are actually beneficial to help an individual better adapt to changes in their environment. For point two, your genes does not dictate who you are. Imagine living a life that dictated with the genes that you are born with, stripping you of choices and control. That is not a life that anyone should live in. The myth that stated the gene determines the be all and all of how we are as a person is especially dangerous because it can put people in utter despair or the exact opposite of it to the point of overconfidence in their genetic information. Living in a time that every medical and professional help are accessible, this belief should be eradicated in time and people should take responsibility of their own well-being and future. Last but not least, most cancers are not hereditary. We always hear these common questions. Is cancers really inherited? If someone in my close family or extended one have it, does it mean I will be next? Well, first, we know that cancer is due to genetic changes, but that does not generally mean it is inherited. Based on the recent studies, only about 5 to 10% of cancers are caused by the hereditary variants, whilst the remaining 90 to 95% percent of cancers are caused by harmful mutations that happen throughout an individual's lifetime. This can be the result of aging and environmental exposures such as smoking and radiation. Therefore, it is crucial to create awareness and open people's eyes to the real truths regarding issues in the genetic field and not to believe blindly on the things that you tend to see on the internet regarding health related information. It is always, always best to refer to a professional medical organization with a reliable source. Hello, so today I want to talk about the advantage of genetics. As you know, genetic field contribute more or less in the community and industries, but mostly in medical field. But how? So today, I want to focus on genetically modified organism, GMO, and vaccine. GMO or genetically modified organism has become the common term used by consumers and popular medias to describe foods that have been created through genetic engineering. But how to make GMOs by genetic engineering? First, scientists look for a desired trait in plant, animal, or even bacteria. It could be traits like resistant to drought, insects, or viruses. Next, they copy the gene of interest and insert it into the DNA of plants. Then they let the plant to grow to see if it adopts to the desired traits. The, the characteristics of all organisms are determined by their genetic makeup and their interaction with the environment. 99% of all GMOs used now produce pesticide, pesticide or are resistant against them. GMO plants are more resilient to climate change. Climate change. Plants that can better adapt to erratic weather and adverse soil condition. These plants can produce more or different nutrients. This way, farmers can use them wisely, killing the other plants competing for resources without harming the crop. On the large scale, GMOs could also not only reduce agriculture's impact, on the environment but actively help to protect them. Vaccine. Vaccines are a way of tricking our bodies into making memory cells by mimicking virus infection that are usually manufactured using inactive and killed virus particles taken from various strains and help our body to immune to a disease. The part of the immune system that vaccine train is called the adaptive immune system. They safely introduce antigen into the immune system to train on and prepare itself to fight real infections in the future. But what is the vaccine used to combat this COVID-19? The leading SARS-CoV-2 vaccine candidates are mRNA vaccine based on the incorporating the 
genetic blueprint for the key spike protein on the pyrus surface. Vaccine help the body to make antibodies against the spike protein and they protect us against the viral infections. But what if your kid is allergic or any circumstance can't be vaccinated? In this case, you need to become the greatest vaccination promoter of all because if your children can't be vaccinated, only the collective can protect them. This is called the herd immunity and it's the only thing that can protect your unvaccinated child. Herd immunity means that enough people are immune to a disease and it can't spread and dies before it reaches its victims. It works by disturbing chains of infections. Assalamualaikum and hello to everyone here. I am Dr. Muhammad Amzar Ahmad, a doctorate and specialist in this genetic field. We'll conclude this forum for today. Some of the truth has been told today and still more to discover. From myth of mutation, inheritance and cancer to the truth with the fact that already been proven with a scientific research. Then there are multiple advantages explained in the use of genetic application for industry, especially GMO. But does we prepare to accept it? For the past few years, as a genetic lecturer, I witnessed how prejudice our society toward these genetic studies. Whenever the word genetics come to them, everything assumed to be bad. We need to put a stop in believing this genetic myth and read more facts about the myth before believing in it. Today, there are a lot of media that publish articles about genetics, but please refer into reliable source only, like articles that publish in science magazine or journals, instead of misleading facts in social media. In genetic studies, there are numerous studies already made to prove every theory and hypothesis. Plus, with the growing world population today, genetic applications seem to be used oftenly because the application assists in numerous industries such as food, pharmaceutical and health. So, we as the member of society, we should be more open-minded toward this greater better change for a better future. We may be able to end the world hunger with the production of cost-effective quality food products assisted by the application of genetics. Before I end this forum today, I hope that the society to start believing and be more open toward these genetic field studies because every discovery will be benefit to all people a lot and this industry will be accepted worldwide and globally. That's all from us. Thank you.